Caribbean island in the Marianas, lying across a narrow strait from newly won Saipan, is bombarded by American artillery on Saipan. Landing craft move swiftly across the channel from Saipan to invade Tinian, strategically valuable because of its airfield, largest in the Marianas. Tinian fell to United States forces in nine days with Japanese casualties of more than 14,000. In an amphibious truck, General Holland Smith, American Marine commander, inspects our positions on Guam. Mopping up operations are in progress on the island. Cleaning out of the last pockets of resistance, the Japanese are completely defeated on Guam, first American territory they had seized. And the stars and stripes fly again over Guam. On board a transport arriving at the port of Naples, Italy, is the first contingent of the Brazilian Expeditionary Force. After long months of intensive combat training, the soldiers of the United States of Brazil are ready to take their places at the front, side by side with their allies. <music> Members of the Brazilian military mission, which preceded this first overseas combat force, greet their countrymen. Commandant of the Expeditionary Army is General Mushkarenyash de Moraes. He will direct operations on the Brazilian sector of the Italian front. General Devers, deputy commander in the Mediterranean, welcomes Brazil's troops. General Devers is now leading operations in southern France. Brazil sends its sons to fight on the battlefields of Europe, the first overseas combat force of any Latin American country in history, and a symbol of Brazilian unity with the United Nations. cruiser docked in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, United States sailors stand at salute. On deck, President Franklin Roosevelt talks with General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Chester Nimitz, high commanders in the Pacific, now directing the great offensive against Japan. Under the presidential pennant, Roosevelt, MacArthur, Nimitz and Ley take part in conferences on strategy for the Pacific War. The president personally renewed his pledge that General MacArthur would return victoriously to the Philippines and express new confidence that the Japs will be smashed into unconditional surrender.
leaving the Navy Yard, the President begins an inspection tour through Hawaii, mighty American citadel. At St. Louis Hospital, wounded veterans of Pacific Island battles turn out to watch. sees a demonstration of rapid-fire shooting by crack United States jungle fighters. At Schofield Barracks, the Commander-in-Chief reviews troops of the Army's 7th Division, back from Attu, Kiska, and Kwajalein. The 7th Division is just one unit in the powerful sea, air, and land forces, now preparing for smashing drives as plotted at Pearl Harbor to blast the enemy from the Pacific. at Bremerton, Washington Navy Yard on the American West Coast, President Roosevelt reports on his tour through Pacific areas and speaks of the war on Japan. The word and the honor of Japan cannot be trusted. That is a simple statement from the military, naval, air point of view. But with the end of a Japanese threat, Soon, we hope, there is an excellent outlook for a permanent peace in the whole of the Pacific area. More than a million of our troops are today overseas in the Pacific. The war is well in hand in the vast area, but I cannot tell you if I knew when the war will be over, either in Europe or in the Far East, or the war against Japan itself. <laughs> 